Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today, and in this GarageBand for iPhone quick tip, we're going to be looking at the very cool world of Apple Loops and how to use Apple Loops to create a song. So let's get started. So we're going to create a new song by hitting the plus icon up here and going Create New Song, and we'll select the audio recorder just so that we get a track and we get our, car, our um, song going. Now, Apple Loops are not to be confused with the brand new Live Loops feature in uh, GarageBand 2.1. Apple Loops have been around for a while, but they're a little bit awkward to get to, and uh, not a lot of people know about them and about how cool they are and how to use them. So let's jump in and have a look at how to do that. Uh, if we go back to the track view here by tapping on the icon at the top here, then we've got our song ready to go. Uh, it's defaulted to our eight bars, and we'll leave it at that for the purpose of demonstrating here today. The little loop icon at the top here, not surprisingly, is our loops function. So by tapping on that, we jump into our Apple Loops. And you'll see across the top here that we've got Apple Loops that we'll have a look at in a moment. We've got audio files and we've got music. So we've got the ability here to um, use our own music that's stored on our iPad to have our imported audio files or those from our iCloud drive um, and bring those into our project. Uh, but GarageBand actually ships with a whole bunch of very cool Apple loops. So you can see just how many they are. We're just down to B at the moment and we're still going. And these are drum loops, they're samples, they're um, bass, guitar, uh, piano, synthesizers, whatever you can think of, they have some loops for them. And they're actually really well organized. So if we go right back up to the top here, I've gone a bit too far. You'll see that there's they're sorted by instrument, by genre, and then by descriptors. So if we tap on instrument up here, then we can actually go through and see, well, what sort of a loop are we actually looking for? Is it a percussion loop, uh, shakers, uh, piano, guitar, drums, etc.? Uh, and we can choose one of those, and that will filter down our results. The same with genre. So if we're doing a particular type of music, we can utilize that. So if you particularly wanted to do jazz, you hit the jazz, and then we've only got the jazz loops available there. Um, we'll reset that by just tapping it again, which is a good trick to get rid of the genre. And then descriptors, this is the type of sort of some keywords or some tags, I guess, of the type of samples or the type of loops. So you've got dry, processed, grooving, melodic, dissonant etc so to use one of these loops and what we'll do here is we'll uh, I like the idea of jazz so we'll tap on genre and hit jazz and these are all of our jazz loops so to play a loop all we need to do is press on it just tap once and can't hear that particularly well so we'll turn the volume right up and tap that again And tapping again, we'll stop it again. And over to the right here, it tells you how many bars each of these loops are. So that was a four bar loop. This one here is just two bars. You can hear it repeating its pattern. Um, and as you go down here, there's all sorts of different sorts of loops. So if you wanted to create a jazz track, you can use these loops and we'll have a go at that right now. Um, the the cool thing about this, obviously, is you can mix and match. It doesn't have to be all the same genre or all the same instrument or whatever. It'll actually match and it'll beat match depending on the BPM or the tempo of your project. It'll actually match that to these loops. So let's just throw in some drums to start with now. Oops, I've just uh, messed that one up. So to actually put these into our song, we tap and hold. And that will actually bring the loop over here into our project and we release and there it is. So it's created, we've just dropped it onto a new track and it's filled that in. And you'll notice it was a four bar loop, but it's actually filled our entire section. So it will fill however many bars you have in that section and it will just loop and loop and loop. So if you've got a hundred bars and it's four bars, it's gonna loop that a lot of times. Um, and it just means that you can adjust that by taking this looping section back if you need to. So you can, just like you do with any other sample or any other loop or any other sound, uh, you can do that directly in the track. So if we hit play now, we've got our nice uh, drum sound as our background. So to add more loops and to build on this, we just go back and do the same again. We tap the loop icon, we come up and let's put some bass in here. So if we tap on this, that's, that's pretty groovy uh, bass. We'll tap and hold 
and then we'll slide that into a track underneath. And now if we go back and hit play. So you've, we've started to sort of build a bit of a groove there. Um, what we'll do is we'll grab one more loop. So let's just throw a bit of a jazz hustle flute. That's pretty cool. So we'll tap and hold and drop that in. We'll drop that here at bar three. So we have a bit of a build up um, and then we have the flute coming in there and, and playing along. So obviously you can keep building on this. You can combine loops with other instruments. So with your own audio recordings, with other virtual instruments. Um, so if you just want to use it for your backing, your bass, your, your drums, you can do that. Um, but we can then start sort of building out our track. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, well, the, the loops are all going to be very much the same, and especially for ones like this that are a melodic loop, um, is that going to just be the same thing all the way through? Um, what we can actually do is edit um, the pitch, and we can edit the tempo, and we can edit a few features of this. So we'll do that now. I'm just going to unloop this back down to four bars, and then tap on it and copy, and then tap here at the next bar, and paste in a new version. Now, I've done that because you'll see now that there's two distinct samples there, two distinct parts of the track, and we can edit these separately. So what I'm going to do is tap on that and tap again, and we can now actually go to the settings for this and start playing around. So you can see there we've got the gain, which is just the volume of the, the sample, the looping, so we can make it continually loop, following the tempo and pitch, so that's important that uh, it follows the tempo and follows the pitch of your project. And down here, we've got two things that are very cool. We've got the, the semitones, which is our transposition, so we can actually make it higher, lower, um, based on that, and we've got speed. So if we wanted to, so especially for things like uh, drum loops or percussion loops, you can speed those up to make them twice the tempo or half the tempo to match what you want with your project. And we've got reverse, which uh, gives you some pretty interesting effects. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this up uh, three semitones. I'll leave the speed the same for that one for the time being so that we can see what it's going to sound like. And we'll just go to this crossover point down here. So you can hear there that it's actually come up um, and is playing a higher um, sound. We're going to actually do the same thing here with our bass because otherwise we're going to not have a match. So we'll do that. We'll copy and we'll paste our bass. We'll tap again, go to settings, and then transpose this up one, two, three semitones. And now our bass will match this second um, jazz flute. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show, I'll copy and paste this flute one more time and tap, go into the settings and just to show the speed function, let's make this twice as fast and hit done, actually let's take it twice as fast and in reverse, just for a bit of fun. So you can see there because it's twice the speed, it's now only taking up half as much, so we can simply uh, drag the end out there carefully. Oh, it's not looped, sorry. We'll tap it and loop, and now it's going to go out there. So because we didn't have that little loop icon, it wasn't actually a looped uh, sample. So now it's looped. Um, so this is going to be pretty interesting. It's going to have our drums and our bass. The flute's going to kick in there. They're both going to go up by three semitones, so they should stay the same at that point. And then the flute's going to do something a bit different, and it's going to play backwards at twice the speed. So let's see what we got here. So there you go. Um, <laughs> interesting sort of sound, but it gives you an idea that by using that, by changing the speed, varying the, the, the tempo, varying the pitch of your different samples and your different loops, you can actually create some intricate sounding um, tunes. So it's not just about the same repeating pattern that, that people think about when you think about using loops to create music. You can actually edit those loops. And obviously, as I said before, you can start throwing in your own sounds, your own audio recordings, and use some virtual instruments to create some even more interesting sounds. Um, so I hope that gave you a good uh, introduction to using Apple Loops. They're a very cool function. There's a heap in there to explore. Get in there, have a play, and uh, enjoy using those in your next project.